Hello. Um, I'm a scientist, but I'm a, a scientist who also is a philosopher and involved in political thinking. Because science can no longer remain remote from political thinking. We are 2,500 years since recorded history, since Plato first began to talk about a perfect state and a perfect ideology. And the Greeks who tried to design a perfect society. We are 2,500 years from that. And we are now in a position where life on Earth is in a critical state, is in a position where it's very likely that most of life on Earth will be destroyed by the products of science and the military. This is a very, very serious matter. And unless we find a new ideology, unless somehow one country or some people or one group of people, or some clever people somewhere, managed to overturn the current ideological system. The system of, of financial control and global marketing, backed up by science, then we are all finished. The human race is finished, and possibly also life on Earth. Because science, which has been developed over the last 2,500 years, the understanding of how things work, the ability to make machinery and make ideas which should enable human beings to live happily, which should take away all the difficulties and, and the illnesses that there are that have assailed us for 2,500 years, has been bought and sold by the military and by governments that are controlled by the military. And this is a terrifying state of affairs. My colleague, Professor Alexei Yablokov of the Russian Academy of Sciences, uh, once said at a meeting in Oxford about 15 years ago, that if you imagine the whole of the world as a chessboard, a chessboard, you all play chess, I'm sure. And he said that if you imagine all of the money and the utility in the world, everything that everybody does and all of the financial systems as this chessboard, then only one little corner where the, where, where the if you like, the, the castle or the rook is, one little corner is the money that everybody has to live on. And the rest of that money is military spending and scientific military spending. And I'll just briefly give you one example of, of what's happened. After 1950, when nuclear weapons were first invented and when they were tested in the atmosphere, the, the scientific control of the understanding of how these weapons affected people, how the radioactivity affected people, was controlled by the United States military and of course by the Soviet military too. And so it never emerged in that period of time how dangerous these substances were. These substances which are entirely new and never existed throughout evolution. Substances like plutonium, like strontium-90, like cesium-137, are terrifyingly dangerous for, for living systems. But nobody knew about this because there was a control over the model that defined how much illness was produced by how much radioactivity. And then later on, as evidence began to come out, that this was so. The people who said these things, the scientists who said that there were problems, were attacked. And then we had Chernobyl, and Latvia that was affected by Chernobyl, and large tracts of the ex-Soviet Union were made seriously contaminated as a result of Chernobyl. And over a million people have died as a result of that, and yet the world governments continue to persist in producing false science, which says that there has been no problem. And now we have a very, very serious problem. We have five nuclear reactors which have exploded in Japan, which are melting down. And the substances being released from this, these explosions and from this meltdown are being released all over the world, all over the globe. They are here in Latvia, they are in Sweden, 
they are in my country, in England. You can measure them. Of course, we can't see them because this radiation is impossible to see. We don't sense it at all. We have to have special instruments. Now, we know as a result of studying Chernobyl, as a result of studying the effects of the fallout from the atomic weapons, that the effects of Fukushima will be serious. And those effects are terrifying. They're, they're, they're continuing because the reactors have not been damped down. They're still, they're still boiling away, producing all of this radioactivity. So this is one example how it is that we are being destroyed by by science, what we have discovered is now being controlled by the military, it's being controlled by world governments. And unless we take control of our, these systems, unless we can have a new ideology which enables proper, true science to emerge, which enables truth to emerge, then there is very little hope for us at all. Now, what, what I, the, last, the last thing that I should say here is that much of this arises from the, the, la, la, the, new, the, the, the current economic system. And, and unless we can control the economic system or change new ideology so that the economic system changes, it will continue as it is now. Because the, world, the, the, economic, the economic system that is there at present requires huge amounts of energy. And the only, the only source of that energy, or the main source of that energy, is nuclear power. So the cover-up of the effects of nuclear power will continue. And the agencies which are in place to look after the people of the world, a system of, of, of uh, safety for the people of the world, are the, are the very organizations which are developing nuclear power. The, the organizations of the United Nations, the International Atomic Energy Agency, and the United Nations Scientific Committees who deal with these issues. So, unless we can find some way of shutting down that dangerous control of science and scientific research, unless we can come to a position where we can have a new, a new ideology which recognizes truth and independence of science, the situation is very, very serious. And that's all I have to say to you. Thank you very much. Oh, thanks.